Hey everybody, I am at a cafe in Crapers called Italia and I was here on the weekend, I was out cycling as I do and we came here, so I was with Kit and Alan and we came here and as we cycled into the cafe there was this car outside, like a vintage looking car and I'm like, oh my goodness, that is one sexy looking car. That's a beautiful car. I wonder who it belongs to. So we came in and we're having our cups of tea and some food and I said to my friend, I really, really want to know who owns that car. And she's like, I think it's that gentleman inside having this gone. And I said, I have to go and tell him how sexy his car is. <laughs> and so I came inside, I said, excuse me, um, is that your car outside? And he's like, yes, it is. I said, I hope you don't mind me saying, but it's very sexy. And he's like, no, I don't mind you saying that at all. We got to talking and he offered to take me for a ride. I think I might have asked actually and he said yes. We couldn't do the ride right then because my friends had to be somewhere. But we swapped numbers and he said he was available this week, Wednesday or Thursday. I'm like, Thursday's my birthday. I would love to do that on Thursday. And the other thing I need to tell you as well, his name's, this is Prince Harry. This is the official Prince Harry. So his name, and I'm looking at him now, and I'm gonna introduce you in a second, but his name is Harry and his last name is Prince. So I am riding today with Prince Harry in a vintage style car. Anyway, meet Prince Harry and let's learn more about him. He's also a cyclist. So yeah, did I sum that story up well? You did, yes. <laughs> I'm glad you said you did ask me for a ride, not me asking you. I think I was quite, yes, I, I'm like, can I, can I, I go know. for a ride? <laughs> <laughs> so, before we get into the amazing car that you have, mm. you're a cyclist. Yeah. And you've cycled your whole life? Uh, I, no, what happened was, uh, when I came out of the British Army, I did a little bit, but then I was busy raising four children and that sort of got in the way of things. So I took it up again probably 32 years ago and I was living in uh, Williamstown at the time. So on the weekends, I was working during the week, I'd go to the Barossa, which is a beautiful run through Lindock and through there, uh, Tananda, and n nice and quiet, no traffic, beautiful. And so you were telling me that you won a race in 1956. I did, in the British Army, yes. So you were racing in the Army while you were in the Army, you were racing? Well, it's a, it's a story. What happened was the, we were living under canvas in Aqaba in Jordan. It gets quite hot there. And the troop sergeant came to me and said, there's a bike race on tomorrow and you're in. I said, I don't ride bikes. He said, yes, you do. It's, it's on your hobbies. I said, no, that's motorcycling. No, it's near enough, you're riding the bike. So, as you do in the British Army, I just did as I was told. And lo and behold, got in there and just blitzed them. I took off and, and won it. But uh, the Adelaide Hills for me are a bit too, the roads are a bit too narrow for me. And so I do the Amy Gillett um, that's beautiful. run. 
and we also, when we go down to um, Port Elliot, we use the one from Goolwa to Victor Harbour. That's a beautiful bike track through there. So this this very sexy car that we've yeah yeah. So tell us about that. It was made by a, a company called Panther West Winds, and they were built in the 1970s by a fellow called Ed Jenkins. He started making replica SS100 Jaguars, which were built in the 1930s, 36. And his model was called the J72. Um, but because they were hand-built, it took a long time to build, so he decided that he needed to get cash flow and do something that he could put out on production quickly. So he produced a uh, Panther Lima, which was fiberglass, and then later on he did the Callista, the one that you were in today. So there were seven models of those and others in between. Um, and he did a lot of work for Rolls-Royce. His workmanship was so good. So I think there's probably 1,700 of those cars that I've got, various forms. This one was the last made, which has got a, a Ford Cologne motor, a V6, 2.9, nearly three litres. Um, the ones prior to that were about 2.8, and I think they did a two litre or something like that as well. Guys, I really want to share this with you. So Prince Harry here <laughs> is going to be 87 in November, and he is inspiring. Like, just talking to him and hearing what he does, he's still doing his paving, he's still doing um, playing, and I'll get him to explain that to you, because I'm just like, you have to share this with everybody, because oh, we're talking about that, like, when's the best time in life to give up or quit? Never. Never is the answer, you know, whether you're cycling, whether you're, whatever it is you're doing, you're walking, you're, you're living, never give up. But, but yeah. Prince Harry, I mean, like, you, what's, yeah, tell us more about you and how, what you do. Well, I, I think it, it would be a shame to, the things I've got in these, with all that knowledge I've had in the building industry for years, which I think it would be a shame just to give it all away. And I think if I can keep doing it, I think it's keeping me fairly fit, as long as I don't overdo it. And it gives me a purpose. But I didn't realise until my wife said to me one day, do you realise what you, what you can do? I said, not really, just a job. Never thought of it. But it gave me a bit of an incentive because when she started explaining how I did things, I thought, well, I'd I just thought, of, I'll just do it. But there's something there and here that I don't want to give away. I was saying to Prince Harry before, I said, I've met so many people who are younger than you, but older than you. It's, in, it's a mind thing, I think. Yeah, never give up. Yeah. Or you, I think it's just how you, you think, I think. It's all in here. Um, I think I'm just fortunate that I've got that mm. without having to worry about it too much. I just do things. Yeah. And like you were saying mm. earlier about the other fellow, that just get through the door. Yeah. Yeah, just get out I've, and... I've got a song that I play on the ukulele and it's called, it's from a Clint Eastwood film called The Mule. And it's called Don't Let the Old Man In. And it's very true, you know. Don't let that old man in, he's knocking at my door. It's, um, so for me, it was very pertinent. I had friends who were playing it at uh, Mount Barker. They, at the, uh, at the um, Saturday morning market. And they normally go there, probably four or five of them. And I heard this song and I said, where did you get that from? And then he told me about it and then I watched the film and it's the background music in that film. So the story was Clint Eastwood and the guy, this Toby Tobias, who wrote the song, were playing golf. And Clint Eastwood was about 87, 9, or what? Coming up for 90, I think. And Toby said to him, what are you doing next? What, what's... He said, well, I'm going to Europe to make another film. And Toby said to him, 
how? How do you, he said, don't let the old man in. And that's where Toby got this thing, the message for writing this song. So that's the rap song he wrote, and that, those yeah. are the words he's used. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is such a nice looking car. <laughs> it's just a classic design, you know. It's, it's, the, look at the, the design is timeless, you know. I think that's what it is, because when I saw it, I'm just like, it's so. And obviously, other people think the same. It's just there's something about it that's, yeah. yeah that's and, classic. you know, even little kids, they see it and they go, wow, you know. So I don't know what it is, it's just the shape. It's not only older people, it's just little kids as well. They think it's lovely. A lot of my friends say, um, when I get in the car or get out, they say, um, we want whatever you are taking. How do you get in and out the car like that? <laughs> when we were driving here, you said that you raced... Many years ago. Yeah, so yeah. bikes, motorbikes? Not motorbikes, no. I did I did uh, scramble riding when I was 17, 18. What's scramble riding? Scramble is probably like what they call motocross today. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I did that for a little bit. And until I went in the army, I had to sell the bike. Um, when I came out, I never did much like that, but I did do Formula Four in probably 1967, eight. But it only just started in the 60s. And uh, I did a few races. And um, I think the following year we came to Australia, so it all sort of finished. I wasn't very successful at it. to Australia and got into cars? Well, I'd always been into cars as well. Car yeah. racing? Car racing? No, no, no. I've, I have done, I've done a CAMS course. I did have a CAMS licence. What's a CAMS course? It's a confederation of Australian motorsport. If you're competing in motorsport in Australia, you need a CAMS licence. So you sit for that and I've got that. I think at that stage I was driving a 911, Porsche 911, 2.7, 911S. And then I later got a 930 Turbo, which was pretty quick. Meeting and hanging out with Prince Harry. <laughs> yeah. So if you're as lucky as me, you'll meet someone like Serafina. <laughs> Have a random girl come up and say, hey. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, Prince Harry. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>